going to talk about something that, uh, a small incident in my life when I started work. And it kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I'd like to call it scale incapable. So the idea was that one small incident made me relook a lot of things in my life, the way I look at things, people, and how I quantify things. As an engineer, I used to think in another scale, but I think this thing, this small incident has changed my life. So before I jump in, who am I? I'd like to call myself as an ambitious and as an inquisitive person. And what do I do? I work in my family business in the airport division. So when I joined back in 2014 from college, you know, I was very naive. And I was very, I was, I was very ambitious but naive. But I lived in this utopian world of mine that anything is possible and sky is the limit. And just as anyone who came back from college. So but don't get me wrong. I was, I was very hardworking. I was very motivated but just a little bit too naive. So when I came back, I was uh, sent off to Mumbai and I was asked to be in our, our asset in Mumbai airport called T2, Terminal 2. It happened to have opened the same year as 2014 and um, I was sent there to get trained. So when I went there the first day, I had to go report to my boss at eight o'clock in the morning. So I went promptly on time. And this is, my boss was someone who built the asset from scratch. It had taken him eight years through all the struggle and all the hard work of the team and everyone involved. So I went there, I was very inquisitive, I was very ambitious. I said, come on, ask. I was asking him questions. I was, I was kind of, uh, quote unquote, irritating him with questions. And he told me, uh, he'll take me to the terminal, because I said I was asking him so many questions. He said, he'll take me around, he'll explain everything to me. So when I went there, I kind of saw the terminal, you know, the image from what we had, and he told me the terminal was 5.5 million square feet. And that's one of the largest buildings in the world today, so 29 to be precise. Then he showed me the car park and said, this is a car park and you know, it's one of the largest in Mumbai right now. Then he moved inside and we saw the check-in hall. And the check-in hall is 200,000 square feet. And just to give perspective, that's like 71 tennis courts. Just imagine lining up 71 tennis courts in a row and that gives you a little bit of perspective. And then the granite flooring throughout the terminal was about 1.85 million square feet. That's the size of 27 football fields. I don't even know how many you know, people can imagine that. And finally, the art wall is very well known there. So he took me to the art wall and said, this is the wall, it's four floors high, and it's three kilometers long. And we realized, he told me it's the longest public art wall in the world. And then he took me outside the terminal and said, this is the facade of the terminal, and said it's four kilometers long. And ironically, Long, Mumbai's main runway is 3.6 kilometers long. And then last, he went and showed me the roof. He said, you know how heavy this roof is? And I said, it's got to be a couple of tons, right? It's actually 20,000 tons. I don't know how many of y'all can imagine that. That's like, that's 20 million kilograms. And that's like 4,000 elephants. And the interesting part about the roof is that there's no wall. It actually stands only on pillars. See that when you guys go next time. And then the final thing he told me was Mumbai Airport served 42 million passengers this year. And then he asked me, do you have any questions? Because I was looking around, I was, very, I was very bubbly, I was jumping around. And I asked him one question. And maybe hindsight, that was not the right question. But I asked him, why don't we serve 100 million passengers like Atlanta? And for someone you know, a kid asking a guy, he's showing me how fantastic this is, how large this is, it's one of the biggest in the world. And I asked him a stupid question. And so he, as a mentor, he's seen me grown up, he's a, a veteran in the company. He asked me this one question, and it kind of changed a lot of perspective in my life. He said, what are the most number of people you have seen at one single place in your life? And he said, go back today, sit in your desk, figure this out, and tell me tomorrow. So I went and said, come on, that can't be too tough. I'll figure this out. So I figured I went for a music concert, it's gotta be 10,000 people. Then I said, okay, 10,000 is easy. Have I seen 100,000? He said, yeah, I was in Michigan, uh, the stadium had 100,000 capacity, so I've seen a full stadium. That's probably true. Then I thought to myself, have I seen a million people? And I literally sat the whole day thinking about that question. And I couldn't come up with a place where I saw a million people. And then I thought about 10 million people. I couldn't come up with a place. At the right, you know, at, the, at one place. Then I realized 
I was incapable of understanding the scale what he was telling me earlier. And I was a guy, he was a kid, who was asking my boss, can we build 100 million size terminal? And I could not imagine 1 million people. I cannot, even today, here we have 500 people here. Can you imagine a million? So 2,000 inks at once. So it was a very shocking and humbling learning for me. It was on my first day of work. This guy who was very ambitious, who wanted to achieve it all. And this kind of put everything in perspective. Because today's world, we say 10 million, 100 million, a billion, very, very simply. It rolls out of our throat. And it was a very good learning for me on the first day. And I went, to, I went back to my boss in the morning and told him, and he was, very, he was very appreciative that I even figured this out. But I realized most people don't realize this. It's a very small thought, and we take it for granted. But have you, have you ever thought of this question? How many people have you seen in one congregation in your life? And I got very inquisitive with this. I mean, think about it in your, your own mind. How many have you seen? If you went to a political rally, you've probably seen 100,000. If you've gone for any of these religious meets, you've probably seen a million, maximum 10 million. I bet no one's seen 100 million. I mean, think of that scale. It's impossible. A billion? Let's forget about that. So, it was quite crazy, right? Think about it yourself. Have you seen so many people? And yet, there are so many people living on this planet, and we keep saying a billion people very easily. So I looked it up, and obviously the Mahakum Mela, which happens every 12 years, um, is the largest congregation in the world. It has 30 million people on a single day, and 120 throughout its 55 days. And it's amazing. What's more interesting to me is how they organize this. It's organized by a government, and they have to cater to the amenities and requirements of people the size of Manhattan every single day. So that is very fascinating. And for someone in this business, I had to, it was shocking. And I used to say billions and millions all the time. I know everyone's a little bit, uh, you think about it yourself. I didn't realize those numbers. I still don't. And the worst part is you used to say only one billion. And today I can't even see, I can't even think of a million people in one frame at one place. By the way, the, this image is a satellite image and it's all an estimation. So we really don't know the number but we have data scientists all over the place trying to figure out the number. And finally, I guess I'm still incapable of understanding scale, but at least I started getting a little bit more mindful. And that's, that's what I want you guys to think about today. We live in a world which is so large, so many people, just think about seven billion people and how we can fit so many people and their needs and requirements. So now when my boss comes and asks me, you know, let's do this, I drill down to a per person basis, and that's the only solution where I can satisfy myself. And obviously I think and answer differently when he says, thank you. <laughs>